Imagine if you never had to plug in your EV ever again. What if you could just leave it outside and it would charge itself, providing it was daytime and sunny, which it often isn't here? Well, buckle up, because solar cars are coming. And I'm not just talking about the weird prototypes you may have seen in student projects and science experiments. Over the next two years, a handful of startups all plan on releasing commercial solar-assisted vehicles that use the sun to charge their batteries and can still be plugged in when it's cloudy or nighttime. So if solar cars are soon set to hit the roads, why aren't solar panels on the roof of all EVs? Well, for once, it's sunny in London, so let's go outside and find out. Okay, first things first, I want to define how these startups are using solar. So under here, I have a solar car, and it's not going to win me many design awards, but it does have a solar panel and a motor. And when sun hits this solar panel, it generates electricity, which powers the motor. But if the sun sets, the motor stops. Now the key difference between my little toy solar car and the startup vehicles is this. Because the startups are using solar in conjunction with traditional plug-in EV charging. What that means is, if you leave your car outside and it's sunny, the solar panels will charge the battery of the car. But if it's cloudy or nighttime, you can still plug it in. How much charge you get from those solar panels varies wildly on things like whether it's shady or not, or even what angle the sun is hitting those solar panels. Basically, it's as changeable as the weather itself. However, the performance of photovoltaics and solar modules has, has improved dramatically in the last few years. That's Bonna Newman. She's a senior researcher in photovoltaics, or solar panels to you and me. So in the last decade, we've seen approximately about a 40% increase in the performance. And the cost of those same solar components has basically been reduced by almost 70% in that same time period. So now we have very high efficiency, very low cost solar components that are being produced uh, globally. Now, there have been solar panels on EVs before, but it's that reduction in cost and gain in efficiency that has led these startups to create vehicles that need to be plugged in a lot less frequently. So what are the cars? And how far could I drive one if I left it charging in an average day of sunlight? First up is the $32,000 Sono Scion. Leave it outside for the day and the solar panels on the roof and sides will give you, on average, just under 10 miles of range. Charge it fully and you can get around 190 miles from the battery. It's affordable, it's meant for the mass market, it's meant for families. Next is light years, light year one. The five square meters of solar panels on the roof of this car will give you around 44 miles of range after an average day of sunbathing, with a maximum battery range of over 450 miles. But all that range comes at a cost, around $175,000. The fascinating thing about solar cars is that uh, the best proportions uh, are that the car is long, wide, and low uh, because low and long for aerodynamics and wide for the solar panel and that actually makes for luxury car aesthetics so that's great and then there's this aptera's vehicle also called the aptera twenty six thousand dollars gives you three wheels and two seats but also gives you up to 40 miles of range from a day in the sun and the company says you can upgrade the battery to give aptera a whopping 1000 miles of range we have over 16,000 orders uh, for these now, so uh, we're looking to start production on these by the end of 2022. Uh, but obviously, you know, you gotta uh, start with a trickle and then a flood. Now, I can't stress this enough. This isn't the distant future we're talking about here. Lightyear and Aptera have both said that they'll be delivering vehicles to customers this year. So if these startups can use solar to help drivers plug in less, why are we not seeing solar panels on the roof of every EV? Well, part of the reason is, even though solar is more efficient and affordable than it was a decade ago, some of that efficiency is still lost when you install it into a vehicle. As we put them into a module and put them between layers of glass, for example, and put on other protective elements, then that, that efficiency actually reduces. And then on top of that, you also have the fact that as it is driving through the world, the angle of the, the module to the sun is also changing on a on a fairly rapid basis. In order to make the solar panels worth adding, those startups have had to completely redesign their vehicles to be as light, aerodynamic and efficient as possible. 
by moving the motors or changing the body shape or putting solar panels on as many surfaces as possible. And if you took the same solar package that's on the Aptera and put it on, say, a Prius, uh, you may get maybe six or eight miles a day of solar range uh, from that Prius. If traditional automakers were to try and install solar on their vehicles, it's likely they'd have to go down the same costly redesign process to see the benefit from the solar. And that might not be worth it, given that solar only works some of the time and you still have to plug in the rest of the time. But despite that, we're still seeing solar making some inroads on other vehicles. Fisker has said that they intend to put a solar panel on the roof of their forthcoming Ocean vehicle. And even Musk has hinted that Tesla's Cybertruck might come with a solar roof option. And in their journey to try and develop these hyper-efficient solar cars, these startups are making some really interesting discoveries and generating a lot of unique intellectual property which, in time, may make its way into other vehicles. So make no mistake, solar-assisted cars are coming. And when they get here, I'm going to have to find somewhere else to park. Hey, if you want to know more about solar EVs, my colleague Rebecca Elliott did a great write-up for the Future of Everything series. I've left the link below. And as always, if you're interested in the future of how we might be getting from A to B, then don't forget to subscribe. See you soon!